this call this meeting in order if you can't do this. Um, look at the roll first of all. Tom Martinez. Adam the Goldstone. Andy Olver. Noah Huber. Chris Foster. Yeah. So uh, that's a whole full of the great chair. Okay, so we're all present. So. Um, is there any old business we need to refresh and go over? Is there anything? I can't remember what we talked about. Last time it was the, the poor one with the cats. I don't know if yeah, maybe hopefully we, that worked out. Yeah, can we update on that? Can we boss and update on her? That's it. I've heard from Alex Dewey, the code enforcement officer. Um, she had requested access to the house and, you know, to her have something. I don't know when Alex had given it to her. But I'm it's ported out. Okay. Yep. That's as much as I know. Yeah. Uh, I think we made the right. Okay. Yeah, I felt bad for it, but it wasn't a matter of public safety. That was So, excellent. Um, yeah, well, yeah, all right. So then we'll move forward on to the discussion about the NEC. And at this point in time, I will turn this over to Mr. Blas and Mary. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'd uh, like to see you here. Um, as Tom and I were discussing before the meeting started, we're, we're not at liberty to amend the NEC. We have made some amendments, but they're not the huge amendments. I mean, they're, we can make it stricter, but we're not really supposed to make it uh, less strict. And so we're basically going to review. Uh, do they have the amendments in front of them? You can review the current amendments uh, if you like, uh, and then talk about some of the changes in the NEC that may create some issues or problems down the road. Uh, maybe not. Uh, you want to introduce that new code uh, map concerning the camera Alex, yeah. We, we would we want your opinion on it to see what you guys think about it. So one of the, at least in my opinion, biggest changes for residential for NEC is a two ten fifty two C two island and peninsula receptacles shall be installed on, in, or above the countertop or work surface, or or and a provision shall be provided for a future receptacle if that is not provided. So previously. On a kitchen island, you put your set within the sides, and I would say you can't do that. You have to put it on the top. On the surface? On the surface. If you're going to put one, you don't have to put one. But you, either way, you have to have the J box in, because they, they, they make UL listed receptacles that are pop ups, and you have, you, you, you have to use those unless you have like a raised bar, and then you can put it along the backsplash. Um, and we had originally kind of proposed a Amendment saying that you have to put at least one. But uh, the contractor meeting, the contract, the electrical contractors in town said that homeowners don't like the pop up set tools, they don't like installing them, and they're, they're just problems and service calls over and over and over So we're, at this point, we're not really, we're leaning towards we're not putting that amendment in to require the one island receptacle. My concern was that. You move into a house and you pay good money for these homes today, and then you're looking at your beautiful counter or your island, and there's no outlets anywhere. I mean, what would you do? Would you be a little concerned or upset? I know I would be. It's like, where's my island? I don't want to plug in my mixer and all these things that are laying on the kitchen island. No, I mean, it's not like we created it. It's the uh, NEC who put that in the language, but I have a feeling we're going to get some complaints. Do we, just, that's just me. Do we know why the code change was introduced? Um, my research says that basically it's the um, the cord hanging over the side. Kids, people in wheelchairs, we didn't find those cords and pulling hot crock pots and stuff down. And then just Sooner or later, you have to be more coordinated than that. I don't have to tell you, you got to watch your kids. It was working fine. It's a shame, but you know, 
it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, not a giant dog in the fight. That's you it. will probably hear it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's, I just have a feeling we're going to get some complaints from the, from the uh, residents. And I think it's something that needs to be ironed out, even as they buy that house. To tell the builder, the builder should be telling them, hey, listen, we're, we're not, not going to put any, any outlets on your countertop, but if you do want one, it's got to be a pop up. I, yeah. I think, I mean, if you're trying to make things more affordable, which you always are, at least you can not have receptacles out there. There's a simple solution. You just skip it, as you say. Um, it's really easy. While you have the crawl space or on a finished basement, I realize some of them are sold these days with a finished basement, but really easy to go ahead, hire an electrician, put it where you want it. When you're, it will be to code them? No. But it will be, yeah. yeah. Well, in, in the county, in the island, they have to have a drain box for receptacle in the island. So even if they finish the basement, the power's already there. Okay. So, so the code at least anticipated somebody wanting to put them in right. later if they want. And you know they're going to put in the ones on the sides, which are not allowed yeah. to and the 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 for it. Yeah. Interesting. The complaint you'll get, but it's easily deflected at the end of the day. It, it is the national code. You can explain why they put it in there, and you know, sorry about that. You know, that's how many times a day do you say sorry about that? I mean, it's part of the. <laughs> just, yeah. Um, I mean, that was kind of like the argument, or not the argument, the issue of the ground fault outlets for exterior condensing units. Oh yeah, that was a that was a little different. Yes. Yeah. That one. Yeah. That kind of another way it was a state kind of put it on hold. Or the manager twenty three and C puts it on hold again until twenty six. So they're just maybe thinking the technology will improve because the contractors are complaining because you know when you start up a condenser it surges and pops the breaker. Yeah. And then what the heck, you know? Yeah. I yeah. understand why they they were at. We had a lot of trouble with those. A lot of trouble. Yeah. So the state kind of said, oh, okay, well, we'll just kind of put that on hold. We won't have to enforce it. <coughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then, what's our position with the then? To do what? On, on these receptacles. Are we going to adopt that? And what, what do you want us to do? Well, I mean, the only thing I was asking for was either an opinion that we sh they should at least put in an outlet. Contractors will say, no, we don't, we don't want to touch that. We just want to let it ride. I, 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 I got to push back on this. I mean, the whole rule is nuts. Mm -hmm. I'll just be honest with you. Because you know, that's, you know, as a, as a, an old builder, the idea of having a maintenance problem that there's going to be a pop up, not always going to work. If you get a phone call at 10 o'clock at night from some pissed off homeowner, hey, my plug did not drive us up out of the countertop. What's the deal here? Get your foot over here and fix my foot. You know, and so I, I think that sometimes these rules, somebody who's sitting in some office is drinking some bad coffee and they're not making any sense by making these changes. It's hard to cut in the ground. I mean, you know, yeah. the ground. And if you spill water or something in those, you it sure? will it will mess them up. Yeah. So you know, I mean, it's, so you want just our opinion on that, or what do you want, Bob? So tell me what you want. <coughs> I just want your opinion as to whether or not you think we should install or we should enforce or create an amendment to say, hey guys, at least provide one outlet. And uh, I, you know, all I can tell you is that the contractors were against that. I, I gotta go with the contractors a little bit. I just, I just let them put that J box in and call it a day. I mean, come on, me to the J box though. It's inevitably you're gonna have somebody plugging something in. It's running across, you know, from one of the other counters yeah. to and the I, island, I, I just created another. which which now we actually have. Yeah, you'll have somebody illegally like, come in and put, you know, gag. The, the hack will basically do his best with his wire nuts, and that's what you're going to do. Or is, you know, you're just going to plug your plunger in the across the way, right? Right, 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 that's true. right, you know, right, 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 right. I, I can picture so, it right now. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't like. Forcing people to cut the grid, and I don't like pop-up outlets anyways. They, they don't want to cut the grid, they don't want to put those in. The electricians hate them because they had so many callbacks, and they just, they just hate those pop-ups. And so it's not an option for us to, to 
delete this part, what you would with the other code, and just say that they can keep the side outlets for now? We can't, can't do we can't make the code the code less less primitive. So the the NEC has eliminated the side outlets on the lower cabinets. Yes. I know, whatever, man. Life was good. Now that yeah, but I don't want to say. How does it work for not um, rolling forward uh, existing modifications? In other words, let's say fifteen years ago, like this board convened, decided that we were going to uh, forego outlets and islands, but now it's two thousand forty, whatever cycle that's going to be, right? How does this modification? Get carried from cycle to cycle to cycle. Do they all? Does every single modification be reevaluated every single cycle? Yeah, the whole thing is reevaluated every cycle. So, but what was built is existing, and it was approved under that code. Right. So it does not have to be brought up as long as it stays well, untouched. The word, the word is good. Yeah, right. with, with minor exception. Well, you yeah. get stuff like calling them outside. Right, right. This word is like if you say that. Fire, fire code. Fire code, code is always locked. Fire code is always active. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm just wondering. I guess I'm wondering how many of these amendments that are that are um, proposed or considered are they are they legacy amendments that are coming from to us now from the prior cycle, from the prior yeah, cycle, yeah. and the prior cycle? Right. For any, not much. Like when we when we get to the like IRC stuff, you'll see a mm -hmm. chunk. Of mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, as of right now, the only amendment that we have that added is the um, service ground conductors shall be installed in the race, which was LPC standard anyways. So we kind of have that in the master standard. But that was more stringent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have whatever we have the leeway to do that. Mm -hmm. That's the only new thing that's that you're Yeah, that's the only new thing that we're planning on. And then, other than that, we're actually planning to get rid of some of the amendments to the NC that we have right now because the code book keeps shifting. It was shifting and now it's already had to be part of it. Right. So, uh, okay, that's on, on um, help, help us. I'm sorry, I've lost. Let me help, help me understand this again. So, you're, so, of course, you're not interested in waiving away the NEC requirements, you're interested in, in allowing. The addition of one outlet. Uh, clarify this one outlet. You've mentioned one outlet. Yeah, right, one outlet right, right now, you don't have that many outlets. Right, okay? right. But if you do, put one in, it has to be the top one. On the surface of the counter. Right. Uh, Between the J box and the counter. The J box, J box is underneath the counter. I don't know where they put it. But it's underneath the counter uh, in case they do want to put one in afterward. They, there's at least power there, so you don't have to tear the basement out or whatever to get to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just want to be clear. I, I, I'm neutral either way. I, I, I don't, I'm kind of like, you know, Andy, I, I really don't care now. After, after listening to the contractors complain that they don't want to, they don't want to mess with the counters, they don't want to put those in, uh, we're just going to leave it up to the homeowners and they work it out with the home buyers and hopefully they come to an agreement. Let it go. Let it go. So, so the amendment we originally wrote was that you had to put in one receptacle meeting 20552 C2, so you have to put in one bottle, at least one bottle. Okay, so that is more restrictive. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. I would I would tend to agree with that, but to, to his point, you know, is it more unsafe than for somebody to jury rig something later? It will be or run the courts, you know, somewhere else. And, and that's always been in the history of I, I know it can happen to anything, but are we as soon as we walk out of the that. final inspection, I've had I've had builders say you've got to turn the sign I know it's there, I expected it. You can do whatever you want. Couldn't um couldn't couldn't a contractor or a homeowner turn that Below cabinet juncture box into an outlet itself to a quad. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Just like you have at your at your uh, sink disposal, you know, and your, and your yeah. dishwasher basically. Right? So instead of having the cords on top and a pop up on top, you have a pass through. And you run it. Yeah, you, the cord goes into your into your cabinet. And if you spill your smoothie in there, well, well, well you got to clean it up. 
definitely not so going away. Is it a requirement just one circuit for that? For that? Is that, is that a yeah. Well, I was assuming it would be due to the fact that it's in the kitchen. kitchen. Well, that would depend on whether or not you have two 20 amp circuits on the rest of your kitchen cabinets. Right. So if you already have those two, then you wouldn't need to have this as well. So your, your field guys would pick that up and do an inspection then? Yeah. Yeah. So they have to go to the field. Okay. Um, does that be GFI for the rear? That's how old is it? That has to be GFI. Yeah. Yeah, that has to be GFI. And then it should have to be. It can be a put it just somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's, it's food prep. Yeah. So uh, I, I really don't care either way. I just wanted to make you aware of that in case you heard complaints like, why didn't they put an outlet on there? Why? We've been on the 23 for a while, haven't gotten any complaints. I will say it's a different community. We don't, uh, having worked here, Erie, and Brighton, you just don't get the same complaints in Brighton. You just don't get them. What what kind of are they doing right now? Are they putting these pop ups? It's just, we just have code, uh, code is written, and no is the answer. I would say you're probably seeing a lot of them. Which I don't get out in the field as much as I'd like to, so I can't say with any sort of, you know, I, 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 I'm not seeing it. I always hoped and anticipated when I was an official I could get out in the field more. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't, it, it just, you try. It just doesn't. It just, it just, it just doesn't work. Oh, well. You fell you here just answering all the emails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I said about it. I like this land code, doing the inspections, and that's in out of the high tower. It, it, it almost uh, that, that it speaks to another point. If, if the contractors hate it, and each time that you have to deal with a contractor and explain it and go through it, etc., that's time you're not doing other things that might be impactful. For instance, it's time that might pull you, especially especially if you're sitting there being the electrician, have to explain it. That's time that you're not out making sure doing group inspections with your electricians, making sure everybody's dialed in doing the same thing. So because you're distracted here, you're not really doing it. It's finite how much time you have to go chase all this junk. So if you end up dealing with contractors on a regular basis, it hurts you from doing other things that are impactful. So on, on the other side of the coin, um, there will always be resistance to change and and change comes no matter what we do. Right? I mean, to use some old examples, seatbelts were, were once reviled, right? Um, so things things have things to move forward. They don't always go in the right directions. Um, there's this whole seesaw of, of values, right? Do we do we get contractors? Are you fighting contractors about a detail, or are you oriented contractors to the fact that hey, code cycles change? You should read the codes, be aware of the codes, like right? Accept the changes. We're here to help you. And now that it's those are philosophical perspectives. I, I feel like um, I, I think that there's not a whole lot of detail here for us to really chew on. It's you know, yeah. <laughs> people who want to fight you will fight you. Yeah. <laughs> Although I don't feel strongly about it, I would advise against it. That would be my vote. I don't know if I need to make some sort of a motion or something. Um, I would uh, move that this board opt not to add an additional outlet to the item. Second. It's three opposed. All, all in favor? All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I think this is going to create a you know, more of a tripping safety hazard, but. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, yeah, it's completely it's plausible. plausible. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, you just, yeah. you're, you're just right. Yeah, it goes back to your point of final, man, as well. You know, some of these contractors. They love to whine, but don't read the codes. You know, and therein lies a challenge you know, at, at, at the public level uh, of educating the code. You know, Blas and I right now resolving an issue of a restaurant here in town. This plumber put in a 500,000 BTU water heater. The owner bought it off of eBay from a boiler sales guy in Arkansas. 
It doesn't meet state requirements. It's not needs to be constructed. And I show up there, and the homeowner, or the building owner, the restaurant owner, he's like probably having a heart attack because that was a thirty-five thousand dollar mistake. Whew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That the plumber and whoever else did not catch. The state schmuck shows up and said, "Hey, you can't use this in the state of Colorado." And so, you know, that, that goes back to what you're talking about, educating these contractors. What the code says is a challenging part. It, it also goes back to your very first point, though. You know, they, they need to read the code, but then we got to not, to the extent possible, not create a different code in every bloody jurisdiction. Uh, I used to be in favor of amending all sorts of things that were good ideas. A good idea is not a high enough standard to write an amendment. Is you end up with, a, with an encyclopedia on your hand, on top of, and so if you're you're killing the contractors that are coming to town to do just one job or two, because there's no way they can keep up with everything that's in this, and that hurts the consumers, citizens, whatever you want to call them, um, ability to have that larger market of contractors to draw from. Um, so I, I sort of 180'd on that in time. I, I'm trying to write interpretations whenever I can that are super detailed. But I, I, I'm living with a lot of things that I would have in the past wanted to have met. And I'm just not going to, I'm not going to create uh, much. All right. Does that give you the answer you need, boss? <laughs> Next item. So do we, do we have to <coughs> generate that provision then? Like, no, there's yeah, it seems to suggest that. No, there's nothing from our end. We're just going to let the code, the pure code, we're just going to let the pure code uh, rule and we're not going to. Uh, we will we will notify the contractors and uh, the home builders. Uh, we don't have a lot of home builders anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're kind yeah. of gone. But wouldn't we build out? I mean, how many sort of future lots? I mean, it's off top. No, we don't build out of houses. How about out of apartments, right. condos, townhomes, mm -hmm. terrace, a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. Next item, boss. Let's watch your nation press on this list. Uh, one of the things I just want to touch real quick on is the 10 amp circuit. Mm -hmm. We're doing a 10 amp circuit. I don't, I don't even know what that looks like. I've never seen a 10 amp breaker. So, the, yeah, the code now allows 10 amp circuits with um, down to 14 gauge copper clad aluminum wiring, and those can't be used for receptacles. So, it's for lighting. It's for the new LED lights are not interesting. Buying voltage thermostats. Interesting. Stuff mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, but the movie says you can't use it on receptacles. Advantageous because cheaper to run? Yeah, cheaper. Okay. Yeah. Cheaper okay. So my only thought was what if we what say that? you can't use a 10 amp breaker? Because I can just see some homeowner buying a 10 amp breaker at the Home Depot and plugging in the stereo system in the living room. Uh, that's not allowed. Can, can we prohibit the use of a 10 amp breaker? It's more, more restrictive. But we, we, it's more good. good. Yeah, that's not going to stop Home Depot again. Okay. Exactly right. That's exactly well, right. Well, the other thing that's a little sketchy here, <laughs> it's a little that's no, comforting no, is that that'll do for use of aluminum wire, yeah. wire, wire. Mixing yeah. aluminum with the rest of the copper because the the um, where the aluminum ties in is made for aluminum, right? You said aluminum clad copper? Copper clad aluminum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's the same. Copper you don't want the copper negatives to be touching dissimilar metals, right? No, so, let's see, let's see. Yeah, copper clad aluminum. So it would expand and contract more on the inside, I would think. I mean, I'm not a physicist, but I would think the aluminum would go through a different, but maybe if it's such a low voltage, it doesn't matter. You won't heat up. Like, yeah, like the I don't know. Some and stuff in. Yeah. Way above my pay grade. Well, and that's why it's the, that that fourteen gauge copper clad would be limited to ten amp range mm -hmm. circuits. Right. I mean, I would, I would move to just axe both yeah. from the cone, yeah. just so we don't have to. That, that sounds like a headache for, that was for you guys. I try. I I'm yeah. devil's advocate. This city is all about making things more affordable. That's a rare, small thing that's barely more affordable. Barely, I'm sure. I don't know what the cost difference will be. But let's see why it's even better. <laughs> it'll be with the market. But, but I mean, you can look at it broadly just to make a quick argument. Um, if it's cheaper, 
developers have more incentive to build so you get more supply so that should reduce in theory economics wise it should work will that actually work probably not well, but uh my concern with that is if, if somebody installed that 10 amp wire and some idiot goes in and puts a 20 amps appliance on that wire okay and there's a fire yes guess who they come looking for yes that or, or you know you, you run short of your regular 14 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then grab yeah. Copper cloud. Uh, I think Chris used it to make that motion. Yeah, so I, I moved to strike both the 14, the AWG copper cloud, and the 10 breaker circuit from our adoption. So I'll second that motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? I am. I'm the one day. I'm just going to leave it as Rick would be in my. But I can certainly see the argument, so I'll act on it. So, every one except me, yeah, yeah, I would I would let it go. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it, it, it's sort of a, all the arguments uh, for, for, for striking it are, um, well, if somebody does something dumb and it's just not not enough, we can't protect the world against, you know, using this while you're driving and so forth. I mean, it's just, you can't fix stupid. Now you ever sign that uh, one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's August, right? Yeah, yeah. it's five hundred all How about that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's I'm learning the, 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 the solution yeah. is take the windows. Chase one problem into the next court. Uh, 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 I did that to that's that's my one. Oh, 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 one time. Is that the name of the agency? Wow. I was like, this is the agency. That was a good one. What? So, uh, so, yeah, I've I've seen people do it on channels. You can't see. They need to turn off. It's very fun. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Switches. Next one. 210.7. Yeah, I guess that would be the only one. Another one that switches cannot rely solely on battery power unless the lighting outlet is automatically energized upon battery failure. When you see this, is this so that's two ten point seven. What application is it? Three ways. So they make remote three ways. So um, you can just put a battery power switch there, battery power switch there, and it automatically talks to the Now this is saying that you can't do that unless if the battery fails, the light automatically goes on. Now typically what I've seen and heard of is on a three way you have one switch that is hardwired and then your slave switch is actually the battery power and the light. And that is so perfectly okay with it. So is the intent here to not allow the light to go off without the homeowner understanding that the lights, the switch itself has failed? Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. And and the light is the light is controlled so the where, what is shutting the power off to the light itself? Is the power off at the light internal to the light and the switches are just talking to it? Yes. If it's fully remote, that's exactly that. So the light itself is talking to the switches and it is actually fed all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just that the loads only pass through to the element when the switches tell it to. So yeah. if one switch dies, then the power goes through this, the, the light bulb. I don't understand why we would be getting into essentially what sounds like software. Chain yeah, manufacturing. So the batteries provide power to the bulb? Or yeah, the no, the batteries only provide power to the switch. So they're just switching mechanisms. Yep, and then so the light is still have to be helpful. Well, that's a, that's a more good problem to have. <laughs> but just, it just seems like a really odd thing to try and use an AC for because this is essentially a three, the three pieces of gear, right? Yeah. Two switches that talk to each other and talk to the light fixture or the light bulb. And then in the light bulb itself is where the, the switching on and off is, right? So I don't understand why the NEC is attacking this or, or trying to mitigate this. I think it's just so you can't be in a dark place. The battery fails, the light just can't be turned off. Yeah. What, this, what this in effect does is it makes manufacturers not be able to build light bulbs a certain way, right? It, yeah. limits, the, it limits the legality of a certain kind of light bulb. So yeah. that when your switches stop having batteries, the light just doesn't even turn off. Turn off, or, or in this case, if it did, if this didn't exist, it wouldn't turn on. Yeah, it gets stuck in the opposition. Right? Yeah, this is anti-manufacturers having that. Normally, 
closed circuit in there. Mm -hmm. So is the circuitry on, on low voltage wiring then to the switches? No, there's, no, there's nothing. So the switches have... So, how, yeah, how does the light go? Yeah. That that bar bar yeah, my yeah. guess is that it would be, instead of sending... Like, so it's always coming from the single signal. Yeah. 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 It's all good to the yeah. Yeah. It's basically, yeah. it's, yeah. it's yeah. already yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Which means it's going to die faster. Right. It always has to be telling you that it's bad. I would say, I mean, one or two and finishes, right? this, that, that's like you know the I, I just sort of wrote my little checklist there it's, it's one of the reasons if you're going to pass an amendment frequency it should not only be like really impactful and make things genuinely safer but how often are you going to see it you want to have an amendment for something that, that comes up once a year well that's what I was going to say how often do you see not very much I mean I don't think we could actually do anything to this because anything you do would be less restricted yeah I agree because it's not true just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> So far as radio, yeah. Well, like that, this is in the national code. So, so they're going to do it. It's just going to wire the switch. Yeah, and everything's fine. Yeah. So. Well, man, even if you play the way this is written, as long as you have one layer, then like the battery part doesn't actually have to oh. do anything. So like you just have that one device. That's what this is. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Do you want to turn this into a motion? Oh, I think it's fine. Yeah. 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 And the only other thing is to say, we're going to allow this section and everything has to be hardware. Like, mm. That's, a, that's, that's, more, that's more restrictive, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't think you need to. Yeah, it's to me, yes. I mean, because like, there's a couple times you could, it's probably a retro thing. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly what you're saying. Yeah, that's what the switch is there, and it's not, and it's not taken out. You guys see it, then you're covered. Yep. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think it's just on this new loan, but right. So, if my list is going to changes, those are really all the. Controversial ones? Because of uh, this, this, to how much of this one here, one more second. Sorry, sorry, Tom. Let me ask you this question. Is it possible that the idea here, the, the valuable idea here, would be to say, let's progress, let's protect the means of egress, only the means of egress. So you can't use this kind of system on a stairwell, for example, right? Because you don't want to be at the bottom of your stairwell the day that the thing, the thing, thing stops working. Good point. That's the only time. So the other thing here, I guess, it's not really. You know, what's, what's interesting about this is it doesn't safeguard you against a power failure, right? Like, yeah. if power goes off, your light's off too quick. Yeah. So, so maybe it's a moot point. Maybe there's nothing else. Maybe yeah, because I'm not the, 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 the um, means of egress is a commercial building. Right. It's still going to have to have that minimum. Standard. Right, 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 right. And this is residential only, correct? No, this no, is for everything. Switch is in there, but I don't have lighting up. Was there any feedback at the contractor meeting about this one? Yeah. yeah. No. And we went through this whole list one by one with the contractors. And yeah, the only one that they really had issues with was obviously the island one. And then a little bit, the feeders that require surge protection. You, you know, so now if you come into a, a service, not only does that service have to have protection, if you feed another panel with it, that feeder now also has to have surge protection. Yeah. Okay. So, how much is that? I'm thinking, you guys live in the farm? Sure. <laughs> Um, that's, that's a technical term for something electrical. Yeah. Okay. I just had to know. Yeah. I was thinking of it. Yeah. 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 So I don't know how much those you don't know. runs, but I don't think it's two. Two two drafts. Yeah. No. Well, that's less than hundred bucks for like a, what's a feeder? Uh, a feeder is defined as something that go that is feeding like a sub panel. It's, it's not a main panel. It's not the main panel. Okay. So you have your main service coming in from the utility, right? And then any other distribution, power distribution centers that that feeds some eight gauge, whatever it is, that's yeah, that's so fast. That that's so yeah. okay. so you're running something out to your garage. Uh, okay, okay. okay. You, might, you might run, you might run something to your basement for the furnace, and then for some dry electric dryers so like, together, and you have a panel there, okay. and then pull those two out right. there. Right. Okay. All right. No, no, I didn't have it. Surge protector is expensive. No, not not very. I mean, they make really expensive ones. <laughs> so for for your standard home, no. The three phase ones, those are a little bit pricier. Mm -hmm. And isn't that where most feeders would be found? I mean, it's yeah. not. So you're bringing in you're bringing in two seventy seven in your box, and then you're running two seventy seven somewhere else in the house to feed like a furnace, an AC unit, or or a dryer. I have a dryer that runs on. on Two thirty-seven, three, two, two forty. Sorry, two thirty-seven. No, no, two forty. Um, you know, and 
it's it's a little sketchy because I don't have the right service, right? Like I don't I don't I don't have the right plug there for it. Um, I need a ground. Right. But when we thought when I thought this whole thing through, I was like, oh, this is this this is complicated, right? So you're asking for a cert protector. That's interesting. But they yeah, that's what the saying, yeah. But which again, I don't think we could really do anything. No. Nah. Mm. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not going to relax that. Right. Yeah. Really change it, so. Okay. All right. I'll move again. All right. Two twenty point five seven. Electric vehicle supply equipment load calculator figures. Then they get um the NEC into was it two twenty five? There's a lot of your know, brain circuit and feeder calculations that kind of tell you how to go through like, the load calculation, and so they included the EV supply equipment into that calculation. That's yeah, That's all that is. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. All right. Uh, allows set two twenty point seven allows the use of set point value of energy management system. And load technology, that's another just lingo in the code. Yep, that's, uh, what that is, it allows an energy management system that you can adjust, kind of like an adjustable panel, basically. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and um, so you can use that, your highest available on your energy management system in your load calculation instead of using a hard number. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, so that, that, that can change as well. That's all part of the process. Yep. Okay. 225.41, emergency disconnect required on all one and two times So that's something we already had. Yeah, I was going to say that. And that's, that's one of the amendments that is now getting, getting rid of because it's now in code. Okay, perfect. Okay. Right, so we didn't have, we have yeah. a motion on that over here. Search protecting all feeders. Uh, we that's something that's that. Okay. All right, system over 1,000 volts. What's that all about? Um, so the 23 NEC adds an additional section to almost every part of the code. Instead of having a, a different, um, just a section in the article, you know, like, you know, that, you, that would have been just in 225, just somewhere in their systems over that was. Now they changed it so that now there's a completely separate article for systems over that was. Yeah, yeah, that's really the only change that that, that was there. All right, and we talked about uh, 240. Yeah. The 1480 W gauge copyright aluminum for the 10 watt press. That's no longer allowed. Is that correct? Or what do you understand? Yep. Yeah, because so I don't say that. All right, good. All right, temper resistant, recept temper -resistant receptacles. Uh, you expanded the list on that. So no, don't the, the, the NEC expanded the list on that. Okay, from what to what? I'm just curious. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. It's almost everything now. Yeah. Okay. Everything residential and anything where a child might be. I'm waiver kids, we just signed up. <laughs> yeah, don't put that bug in the sun. Put it just once. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I didn't listen to became an electrician. <laughs> right. This is fascinating. Yes. <laughs> the new article on cannabis oil equipment, the cannabis oil systems, is it found with What's the story there? Uh, that's just how to protect the equipment and the personnel. So, it, 512 is part of the special systems and hazardous locations okay. chapter. Right. You guys see a lot of those things. All right, swimming pools, I should have equipment, e e e oh. equipotential, equipotential, thank you. Buying equipment without associated electrical equipment going to the pool, explain mm -hmm. that. So that is, even if there's no electrical equipment for the pool, they still have to bond all the metal parts. And the pumps are saying. Yeah, well, no, the same there's no pumps. Because it's saying without, without associated electrical equipment. Uh, do we ever see a pool to the house? Yeah, is that, I don't think that's a gravity driven pool. No, not really. Well, and I think it's, that, that may be kind of more toward your um, above ground storable. Uh, you know, the big right. ones, not necessarily the inflatable ones. Right. The okay, pools, but your big ones that you set up, those are going to require some sort of equal potential ground. If they have a metal ladder, it's got to have a ground. We don't require permits. For that, anyways, mm -hmm. we do actually. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, over five thousand two foot, five thousand gallons. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have in our backyard, guys. It is like three foot tall, or there yeah, and about fifty foot round. And my youngest son, this was many many years ago, went through a nose dive in that thing, it collapsed aside. We had the great wave hit the basement wall, flooded the basement. Oh, like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so the window wells out. And it was, oh, it was a, the tidal wave, man. Those are funny. Last pool. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never yeah. yet. So, okay, good. 
All right. So on this list of changes, then uh, that's pretty much resolved. What we resolved. How yeah. Do you, how do you inspect this six eighty two six? How do you? I mean, how do you? What What does the report look like? I'm just curious. <laughs> Number six. Yeah. Re your last. You, so like, what you're gonna get a temporary above ground pool in your brand new building, or you're gonna ask for a permit when you someone buys a pool? Yeah. 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 So they, they, if they want to set up an above ground pool, so I think you guys said it. Yeah. If you have five thousand pools. Yeah. Thousand pounds. Can you? Yeah. 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 I guess I guess the, the way this actually works is your neighbor looks over your fence and goes, "Oh, <laughs> that's exactly the HOAs." Yeah, report them in, yeah. and then you have to follow up on them, and they're like, yeah, they yeah, take a lot of time. That's harsh. And then go out there, and, and so for the temporary storable pools, that would only be if they have a metal ladder. Yeah, only the metal parts are going to have to be equal, equal potential bond. We're going to have a metal deck around it. Well, then you have a seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got some. Are you gonna have like a layman's terms, you know, like bed on site or something? For, I mean, well, this is not gonna understand. So the significant change that's, that's just uh, what's in the two or three. Sure, sure, I'm just saying. Like, like, like when they pull it, like they're gonna have to like really. Correct. Yeah, we'll have to put that in terms of the stamp for all the drawings. Yeah. Yeah. All of the puts here. All of the places. Mm -hmm. People with a lot of yeah, space. Space. You can get those pre manufactured pools that are made in the factory. Yeah, if I can. see a big old crane pull up to the house, they pick up the pool and they lift it over the house and then they set it down in the back door. Yep. That's how they do it. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And so then, do we have a motion then to just say we've approved all these changes for this year? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I move that we approve. Changes earlier moved. <laughs> well, no, like, uh, and, and then I would also, like, also, like, uh, would also like to vote to, to indicate that we may proceed with the adoption of the uh, NEC as amended. As amended. I, I, I move that we approve the adoption of the NEC as amended. Second. First, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We got uh, real quick. Uh, everyone has a copy of the last few minutes. I mean, I think we still need to do the these changes, right? I mean, these are just that, that last one. That, that was that one. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so. I would as as amended. Yeah. Okay. So from here, I don't have any questions. We we, we could talk about the whole thing. Um, I will I will accept a motion to accept the minutes from last meeting. Uh, if so, in order. Move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting. Second. Okay, there's a first and second. All opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to accept the same to vote with the Right on. <laughs> okay. Um, Missed an interesting one. Next uh, order of business. <laughs> there's a, a, a election of chair and vice chair to approve the post location of meeting notice, etc. Um, do you want to expand on that? Mike? It is a requirement for all the city boards um, to make a motion and approve an official meeting location for their meetings, uh, the posting location, I'm sorry, the posting location for your meeting agendas. And that official location the city recognizes as the website. We post them in other locations, but you just need to, to make a motion to approve the official posting location as the city's website. Okay. I've made my thoughts. I like this from the here. Well, it's, you, where it's, it's the website. It's just so that, yeah, so you, you can it. have your meeting so, wherever you want to have it. It's posted. just the posting yeah, of the agenda. Uh, I move it. that the agenda mm -hmm. is posted on the website. Second. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Then we have to vote. All in favor? 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 All in uh, it was in the last meeting there. Yeah, it was, it's in the yeah. last meeting there. That's exactly. So, how long is that for? So, for a year. Okay. So, you have to redo it again later this year. Okay, all right. So, then you let it go the other. Okay. And then just the eye codes. Yeah. <laughs> when, when are we doing that? So, so we're going to announce temporary shot, I'm guessing, maybe? We're hoping to get those officially out to the council, possibly by the end of the year. 
So, you know, make them officially enforcing challenges. And what changes do you see coming? Yeah. Uh, it will get me six pages of notes for the IPC. But mm -hmm. It's a good job because we've also been pushing off a good chunk of yeah. stuff for like the last like three adoptions. Well, as far as I know, we're still not planning on requiring sprinklers in single yeah. family or two family homes. Okay. I think we're what about the EVs? A couple years ago, we talked about the EVs trying to say on every new house. Is that mm -hmm. still dead? Or is that mm -hmm. This, I think, the, one of the, this next adoption cycle, we, we need to talk about this uh, Colorado model energy electrified. So you last won't cycle, have a choice. You yeah, can't last cycle, we put in EV red. Right? Yeah. Not EV, EV and EV red. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but then there, were, but there was the, the one that we pushed off as a solar rotation. Like it was the running, I mean, there was the roof pitch had the oh, lot yeah. I don't place, and we, we pushed that out last this time. Is, this is now this model energy curve. It gives yeah. you the it gives you the, the roof profile and the exposure profiles for the roof. Um, essentially, it's everything. I think it's from like one ten to two seventy. It's everything. That's what it is. So what's the answer? Yeah. What's the service side of the to a to to add an EV station? I don't believe it goes down that road. I think it's silent on that. Yeah, yeah. it's right. just they have a one page amendment in the energy code, um, and it really looks similar to the state. Um, it's uh, appendix, I want to say RB, so residential B, like the second one. Um, and it's like literally one page. The thing that's most confusing about it, if you will, or open to interpretation, in that appendix, he uses the word site, but you don't know if it's referring to an individual lot or to the subdivision at large. And it's the, the, the where that comes into play is shading. It's talking about shading. So, if I've got a two-story home built immediately to the south of a ranch, which is north, and of course my son is cruising through this way, and I've just I've created this two-story home. Now, if site only meant the lot, then okay, you can do that. If site means the subdivision, then you're in trouble, right? So you know, because you can't have the obstructions. I would I, I'd look at it if, if planning, you know, calls the site the lot, then life is easy. And just keep doing business like you've always done. There's another interesting wrinkle there, which I so the energy office, Colorado Energy Office, has these um, stakeholder meetings that they keep having, and they actually presented at the Educational Institute in Wellman this past March. Mm -hmm. um, and they discourage the location of your solar panel off your roof and somewhere remote. They discourage that. Although I think that that's actually a huge bonus to say, hey, you can't get it on the roof because it's shaded. Cool, you can put it in the corner of the backyard if you have the acreage. Or if it is the site is really the subdivision, you can put all the solar panels in one corner of the subdivision and put the houses over here. Right? Yeah. So there's there's a lot of interesting wrinkles there. It's um, as most new code is written, it's not fully baked. So there there'll be a lot of things to discuss and, and ways. Which you might want to look at it and, and manipulate it to Longmont's interests. And we and the, the twenty four IRC and energy code has not the energy portion of the IRC and the energy code hasn't been published. Mm -hmm. I think it's in litigation. Mm -hmm. You know, I think yeah. 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 So I mean, there, there was a lot we flushed out last time for sure. I mean, just trying to make some silver. Like, what are you're you're like, already like, like, I do I do remember this. I, it's a good idea, but you can never not get all of us. Whenever you email, what everybody has to be in. It was one of the right. um, city attorney stressed that a bunch do not of years ago. Reply all. Yeah. Right. Or blind carbon copy. Put everybody in the blind carbon copy. Okay. That's how you prefer it. Yeah, that's how we prefer so it. That way you don't get it would be an open yeah, meeting. Yeah. Yeah. It would open a meeting if you all reply yeah. hit reply. Would it, would, it, would it be best if we just always went through you every single time to, to so that we don't have a that's an, great. An I'm not gonna be the official board secretary, but I will train the board secretary. I I'm the board secretary for Planning and Zoning Commission, and everything communication-wise comes through me, and I distribute it to the commissioners. 
it's just a protection for them so that they know that it's coming from the city and they don't hit reply all. I put that extra protection in there. Okay. That's good enough. Yeah. Are we just those little spots? Mm -hmm. We'll get we'll get step step right. step these cards. How's Linda? You heard from her since she's retired? Say again. How's Linda? You heard from her since she's retired? Yeah. She's doing some traveling. She's, no, good. Good. she's enjoying retirement. We've yeah. touched base with her a few times. We've touched yeah. her a lot. She had a lot of years yeah. of knowledge. Yeah. Is her son still on the court? Yeah. He's out. He's out? Yeah. yeah. My grandson is now a corporal. He just got done his basic in San Diego in September. So he's now in an embassy guard training school. But he's a Marine. He's a Marine, yeah. 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 So it's a, it's a good thing. Um, I he needed it. <laughs> that would get him in shape. Yeah. Put some discipline in him. Back in graduate high school. And a little conversation with Thomas. This is what we are. You're going to be told we're going to be open to graduate. And your only job is to graduate. You can't go to the Marines until you graduate. Did you get self control of the line? You can't do that. Yeah, I said, no. You have to go for me? You have to get a few of the breath. All right, Grandpa. Well, he's 30 months. He was not going to pass. He was not going to graduate. Oh, no. Is he going to this? I think he's traveling, yeah. And uh, he finally uh, graduated right before. So, <clears throat> quite the pomp and circumstance in my graduation. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, so that business card is Stephanie Wynn, and she's Linda's replacement. She's She works with Bloss and Matt, and she'll be taking over this board. She just couldn't be here for this meeting, so we'll probably see me for a couple more meetings. What will be meeting here again? It, it's a, your preference. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a little more, for me, it's a little more personal as opposed to the chambers. Agreed. Uh, yeah, agreed. Agree. I don't like breaking the money system. Uh, we, don't have, we don't have 1,600 people here. And, and that's, that's the thing. If you find that you have something controversial, that yeah, the, might... the cat thing belonged over there. I mean, for yeah. sure. But uh, but uh, and but you will always be recorded by Long yeah. Public Media. That is the contract we have with them, and we do record all of the meetings. So. I, mean, I like personal rapport with you guys. You know, we talk about things from the off the cuff. Yeah, you know, to me, that's what the team goes all about. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, there will be a time when we have to make some tough decisions. Uh, like the cat lady one, you know, how else to call it. You know, I remember the one where the, the fire sprinkler has a left hand? We had to make that decision as well about what they do for water service. For, for you know, and that didn't go well with, with those guys. But, you know, we have to make some tough decisions. That's why you didn't make the big blacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, to be honest, you see any people. Fire, uh, fire, not pushing you guys on the residential sprinklers at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of ironic since the fire people wouldn't want to put it in. Yeah, exactly. I was just curious uh, elsewhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're busy, and uh, like I said, uh, have you guys made commitments to the IFC? Oh yeah, we're gonna get to that. So it's like they're behind. I just leave one on there. I, I call the show. Yeah, get along. Yeah, I know you did. Michelle, I just expect a new, really new fire station station one. I said, you know, you guys really got a cool snow melt system. And he said, the north side of that driveway. I drove by there. That's quite a big device in the thing. Uh, is, is it not working? Or you guys have to turn it on. She said, Tom, huh? I don't know, but I better go check that out. She <laughs> said, well, I'm trying to do things. I don't know whether that happens going back. So, it's good. So, anything else? No. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Move to adjourn? Yep. Make motion to adjourn. So, we'll move. Any comments? Done? Adjourn. We're good to go. Thank you, guys.